in addition to the awards that are year after year on this award show, uh, I went back throughout the year and kind of made some notes on some past Wrestling Observer Awards that are, well, discontinued by the Observer for one reason or another. This one is my favorite, <laughs> and this is why I wanted to, to include it in this year's awards. This award ran in the Wrestling Observer from 1985 on through 1992. Uh, at the end of 1992, it was deemed... Uh, I guess redundant or Dave didn't want to run it anymore because the same guy ended up winning it three times in a row. This is the most obnoxious award for 2020 uh, as was picked by myself and Morehouse (laughs) under the wrestling observer rules. Uh, I have deemed this the Herb Abrams Memorial Award because Herb Abrams, the former uh, promoter of the, well, second UWF, Universal Wrestling Federation from the early 90s, ended up winning this award uh, three years in a row, 1990, 1991, and its final year in 1992, uh, just basically being the most obnoxious man in pro wrestling, <laughs> the one that you don't want to see on your TVs. You don't want to interact on social. Well, there was no social media back then, but um, an interesting hypothetical was brought up on a podcast. I listened to the between the sheets pod with uh, David Bixen span and Chris Zellner in one of their Patreon specials. And they basically said, um, could you imagine if this award existed today, who the winners would be? Well, imagine no more. This is why we're here. Mr. Hypothetical is here, so this is what we got. So, most obnoxious of 2020. My picks kind of split. One is uh, devoting strictly to the on-television, on-screen product, and that's the WWE winner. And the non-WWE winner, I went just literal (laughs) here with it. So, my picks are from WWE King Corbin and non-WWE, AEW, NJPW, whatever. It's not somebody affiliated with a promotion. Uh, There was a fella on Twitter by the name of Brad Shepard who wrote for a uh, publication called Pro Sports Extra. And he is my pick for the most obnoxious award winner for 2020. Just due to the fact that this guy was the card-carrying definition and is the card-carrying definition of slum journalism. <laughs> no, I, I mean, he has, I, the amount of research that he puts into his articles and that stuff is probably slim to none. He's a guy that writes very clickbaity type things like, oh, I don't know who has the best ass out of all the WWE women's wrestlers or something. And our freaking timelines can't get rid of them because every time we block him, he's kind of like the current sitting president in the United States. He just hops on another t- Twitter account and starts spewing his stuff all over. So, um, yeah, Brad Shepard of formerly Pro Sports Extra. I have no idea what the hell he's writing for now. I see him still from time to time on my timeline. You, sir, are the most obnoxious of 2020. Um, even more obnoxious... Uh, then, you know, even people that I know that have started channels and have quoted stories wrong for editorials or so on and so forth. This guy constantly, day after day, year after year, month after month, is just putting out real clickbaity stuff around the business and it's just gets sick, sickening after a while. So that's that's a fantastic choice. I didn't end rant. <laughs> that's, a, that's a fantastic choice. I didn't pick him as mine, but. I wasn't thinking about him either. <laughs> I, I went off the board with that one. I went w- way off the board. And maybe, maybe some people say I've, I've gone overboard with that. But there we go. But uh, my WWE choice, King Corbin, strictly is just character-wise. I, I think he's you know, definitely doing his job as a heel. I can't picture him as a baby face. That's the thing is that I know that the, that the needs of WWE or whatever brand he ends up on in 2022 or whatever – uh, may dictate him to be a babyface wrestler, especially after he loses the King of the Ring title. But the thing is, I can't picture him being a babyface. I think he is he's a career heel now at this point. He's like Randy Orton. He's just he has that heel persona. He just has to be a heel. Mm-hmm. 
Exactly. Um, so go ahead choices, with yours. Yeah. So my choices. Um, so for WWE, I'm choosing uh, Mr. Vince McMahon. Okay. <laughs> Reason easy, why. Easy is target. <laughs> easy target. Um, this year in 2020, um, he had record profits, yet still saw the need to release 20 or 30 backstage wrestlers and talents just to help his profit. Mm -hmm. um, he took away wrestlers' rights to enterprise themselves and market themselves online, mm -hmm. um, unless w he, they pay WWE a certain fee for that. Yeah, the uh, Twitch gate. Uh, Twitch gate, uh, YouTube mm -hmm. gate. Mm -hmm. um, I think only Xavier Woods was able agreed to do that deal with him. Yeah, just because um, Xavier is making money hand over fist, I think, with that, and he has outside interests that will cover up the shortfall. I, I think that's the only reason why he agreed to that, but anyway. But it affected Paige, it affected Selena Vega, it affected AJ Styles. Yep. Um, a, a bunch of others, Drake Maverick, I think, had to close his Twitch as well. Yep. Well, it affected Zelina Vega to the point where she left the company over. Yep. Because so. she was making more money doing Twitch than she was working for Vince. Yep. Her outside uh, ventures. I, and again, they have the pay scale issue with the men, women uh, talent there. Um, Selena was barely making enough to, you know, live a happy life. So now doing Twitch full time, she's able to make more than that and mm -hmm. enjoy the benefits of it. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's my pick for WB is Vince McMahon. Mm -hmm. um, my pick for uh, the Indies, AEW, et cetera, it's mm -hmm. a three-way tie. Okay. Um, we have three idiots, <laughs> three Trump heads. Okay. Three people that had no problem with what happened just recently in the U.S., yeah. Okay. The, the events of the pa past week have drastically uh, changed but, our opinions. But these, the, but these people's stuff. opinions were already set in stone prior okay, to good that point. incident. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that would be Sean Morley. So, the, okay. Glenn Gilberty. Disco Inferno. Okay. And Chris Jericho. Wow. Okay. Uh, there was another name that I thought you were going to mention there and he didn't. That's, that's interesting. So, okay. I am not familiar with what the former Val Venus slash chief Morley has said over the past week or so with this. So, um, so for the past week, he's been blasting Twitter, Facebook for taking Donald Trump offline. They think okay. it was uh, the Americans had the right to do what they did. And this is, and it's coming from a Canadian, which is hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> Um, with uh, Glenn Gilberty, mm -hmm. he's been attacking trans the trans community last year. He does just doesn't understand yeah. anything that goes on with current wrestling. Yep. Um, and he's trying to make a name for himself because you know that's what he's done since he's been WCW. When Don Callis and Lance Storm had their Killing the Town podcast, uh, Disco Inferno was a running joke on that uh, podcast because both Don and uh, Lance agreed that Glenn does not get the business, never got the business, and is giving people the business <laughs> while not understanding the business, if you know what I mean. Uh, go back on the Killing the Town uh, podcast feed. It's still up on iTunes and everything, even though they've stopped doing shows for, I think, over a year now or something like that. Uh, and just listen back. And those episodes are clearly marked as well, too. Uh, there was a debate between Callis and Gilberti where Callis absolutely lights him up. And it is one of my favorite podcasts of all time that I've ever listened to. It's just a solid hour of, okay, I'm going to drag you through the mud. And for whatever reason, Gilberti takes it. And it's like, it just every five minutes, something stupid comes out of his mouth and they just jump on it. It's, it's, a, it's amazing. But yes, we, I've known about the, uh, the, the Disco Inferno's lack of knowledge on well basically anything woke we'll put it that way yeah he he doesn't get it uh and then uh, jericho um i think jericho's just had a poor year last mm -hmm. year um from everything having you know don jr show up on his podcast and talking about how republicans are awesome mm -hmm. to him attacking people that don't believe differently than him on twitter mm -hmm. um donating us you know he donated over 30k to the trump campaign openly um, he didn't get the election results and he said it's a fraud. So he's joined that bandwagon as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, yeah, that's, that's a fair thing. And uh, like I said, we can go back to all of our comments during the, the year in review show that we did. That's back on the channel as well. Talking about Chris and, and how 
I think that a lot of pressures with his position are starting to get to him a little bit. And it, the big pressure of, you know, he's sunk a ton of money into this triple whammy cruise thing that's going to, that's supposedly supposed to happen, but it might not happen. So we'll see what happens, you know? Yeah. He's also, I, I, I think he's not a big believer. Like he understands COVID, but he doesn't believe in COVID too much. Ah, okay. Um, yeah, he, because he early... did the Stur- he did the Sturgis rally um, with over sixty thousand people in the summer. Yeah, um, that actually I... had an outbreak go- out, out of it. And, and one thing that I'll, I'll say, like the Sturgis rally thing, is is its own deal. I can't defend the guy for that or whatever. The thing about the podcast that he did is that he did a podcast with a COVID denier. I think scientist or something or not even a scientist i think it was just a uh an editorialist or something like that anyway he was a covid denier regardless and he put that out there in the beginning weeks of the pandemic and i think within a few weeks or so after the backlash started to pick up he had somebody on that was an actual doctor talking about the whole outbreak and what we should do and 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 so on but, and so forth but he was told to do that by his company i believe so i th- i i i i think he did I, you know there's there's not really a, a, a full defense on that all i can and, say too is that during the election he did have andrew yang on you know months later or actually i think even a few it might have been months later it might have been a few weeks later i can't remember the exact timeline uh, after Donald Trump Jr. was on uh, talking about basically Yang's vision about going after WWE over the labor issues and and, and so on and so forth. So I think that he might have had a, a – with that, I think he might have had a quick 180 once he saw everything was – how everything was going. And maybe that was after his last co- a campaign contribution or something. Like that. But I don't know. There's going to be a lot of things that he's going to have to try to – to he's, explain he's had out a, of in 21 we'll put it that he's, way he's had a weird year um i think he openly admitted to having a dream recently with chris benoit in it and telling him to do these things for the people and yeah he's just a little crazy and if that's the case then i'd be really concerned about him having some sort of cte or something oh he definitely i think he definitely it. has some mental health issues so so that that'd be my my one issue right now with that but uh, you know, like I said, this cruise thing is definitely something that I'm following very, very closely. And you can go back through the channels and, or go back through the channel and see all my past work on that and, and so on and so forth. And I'm, I'm endeavoring to have people on the channel to talk more about it, you know, as, as the weeks and months go on. Uh, and yeah, that's where we're at with it right now. So, so we'll, we'll continue on with that, but yeah, there we go. That's the first ever most obnoxious of 2020 Herb Abrams Memorial award winners from both sides here. Uh, Turbo Herbal. I hope we did you proud here. <laughs> uh, Herbie cookie. 